All right, well, hello everyone. My name is Aaron Standard with Petabridge, and today we're gonna to go ahead and uh, create a little video on live debugging Akadana applications with Phobos. Now, I actually hadn't planned on making a dedicated YouTube video for this today, but it just so happens that we're in the process of debugging our Akadot cluster uh, plus Kubernetes workshop, and I am actually using Phobos to do that. So for our users who are interested in learning how to use Phobos to solve problems in production with their own Akadatna applications, I thought this might be instructive. Our application is running Akadatnet 1.4, ASP.NET Core, SignalR, and it's hosted inside a Kubernetes cluster. So it consists of five services. Uh, we're using Lighthouse, which is not instrumented with any Phobos at all. That's just using the stock image from Docker Hub. But then we have three services that we built here in-house, uh, the trader service, trade processor, and pricing. Uh, we basically built a little miniature stock exchange, and the traders are the ones responsible for submitting uh, little bids. The trade processor runs the order book. Pricing service computes a volume-weighted price based on matched trades. And then finally, we have the pricing.web service, uh, which uses the Akadot cluster client to connect to the cluster and renders all this data on screen about the sort of price and volume movements for each of the individual ticker symbols. Now, in terms of the technology we actually use for this application, we're using Akadot cluster sharding to go ahead and host the order books as well as the price aggregators. Uh, we're using Akadot cluster tools. Uh, we're using distributed pub sub and the cluster client to go ahead and broadcast uh, individual changes to match trades. And the cluster client's being used by the pricing.web service to connect to the pricing service and download the price and volume feed for all the relevant ticker symbols that we want to uh, display on screen. And then next, we're using Akadot.persistence.mongodb to go ahead and persist our order book data. And then on top of that, I believe we're actually using Akadot Persistence Query in a couple areas inside this application as, as well. So that's uh, going to be using Akka Streams under the covers too. Finally, in terms of our non akadotnet technologies, we're using the ASP.NET Core stack with SignalR. And we're also using Microsoft.extensions.dependency injection pretty heavily, uh, particularly inside our web service, uh, where we need to go ahead and grab access to our SignalR hub for being able to render this price data on screen. And the problem that we're currently running into in this application, and what I'm going to try to use Phobos to solve, is the fact that we're actually not getting any data on screen, despite the fact that our cluster appears to be healthy. So let's go ahead and take a look at some of the data that Phobos is showing us and see if we can pinpoint where the problem is occurring. All right, so I've just launched my Kubernetes cluster. And uh, this code sample, by the way, is actually open source. Uh, you can get to it by going to uh, github.com slash petabridge, Akadot.net cluster workshop. We have a number of lessons online that kind of explain how to use Akadot cluster and Phobos and Kubernetes to go ahead and build production applications here. And the pull request that I'm working on is trying to go ahead and modernize this course uh, to use the newest versions of a whole bunch of different libraries, including Akadot.net and Phobos. And that's why I ran into some trouble, was I believe I may have introduced an error when I upgraded to the newest version of our dependency injection library. This is the output from my little Kubernetes script that launched my cluster a few minutes ago. I'm gonna go ahead and use Kubernetes. Uh, we're using a special namespace that I created just for this app. I'm gonna go ahead and use the get all command. And I can see that all of the pods in my Kubernetes cluster are running fine. So I have some pods that are running infrastructure like MongoDB and Jaeger and Grafana and Prometheus. And then I've got others that are running my software, such as my pricing apps, Lighthouse, pricing web, trade processor, traders, all that stuff. And I can see a list of all the different little IP addresses and everything down here and where some of these services are exposed on my host computer if I want to access them. Well, the pricing UI for this application is running on localhost on port 80. So if I go here and I hit reload, I should see usually within maybe five to 10 seconds because it runs on a interval, I should go ahead and see a stream of data about changes in price and volume for various stocks that we're working with. And if I do control shift J, I can go ahead and see that our WebSocket connection uh, to SignalR has gone through. So it's not a connectivity problem there, but I'm not getting any data at all. Hmm. Well, let's go ahead and try taking a look 
at Prometheus first. So this is Prometheus. It's running inside my Kubernetes cluster. And this is a metric system that will go ahead and scrape an HTTP URL that is exposed. In fact, if I pull up my code here, I'll go ahead and move this on screen. Oops, this is actually the wrong application. Here we go. This is the right one. So if I take a look at some of our YAML for our Kubernetes cluster, and I scroll up to the top, you'll see these annotations here. So Prometheus is going to go ahead and scrape this slash metrics URL on every single one of these hosts on port 80. And that's where all this data is going to go ahead and come from. That's going to populate our dashboard we're going to use to try to go ahead and chart the health of our service. Okay. Well, looks to me like all the targets are all working. I can see that we're targeting the trade processor, the pricing node, the trader nodes, uh, the pricing web nodes, all that stuff. So it looks to me like Prometheus hasn't had any trouble connecting to any of these services. That's a good thing. Uh, let's go ahead and take a look at Grafana. Now, since I went ahead and launched this, I actually uh, was logged into an earlier instance of Grafana. When I rebooted my Kubernetes cluster, it invalidated my session. So I have to log in again. Our password for this case is just admin admin. It's the default that Grafana uses. That's why it wants us to change it. And I can go ahead and see that we have eight nodes inside of our cluster. And I can go ahead and see real briefly what the status over time looks like here. And I can see some data about our logging activity occurring here. I can see some debug logs, but I can also see some error logs. Okay, that's going to be useful for us. And I can go ahead and start to see some exceptions down here. Mongo bulk write exceptions. Okay, well, that might be really interesting then. That might indicate what some of our problems might be. Well, let me go ahead and first validate that the data we're getting on our dashboard is correct. So I'm going to go ahead and pull up one of my consoles here. And I'm going to go ahead and use the Kubernetes exec command. So I'll go ahead and do exec lighthouse zero. It's the name of the, one of the lighthouse pods. I'm going to do pbm cluster show. Uh, this is using petabridge.command, which is one of our other products that we make. And it's using this to go ahead and give us sort of a live snapshot of what the cluster looks like right now. So I can see that we have uh, two Lighthouse nodes, two pricing nodes, two trade processors, and two traders. And that gives us a total of eight nodes, which matches what we have on screen here. All right, uh, that is what I was expecting. So that looks good. Looks like we're getting accurate data from the cluster. Now, one thing I should point out is that our web nodes, which is what we're actually trying to debug, they actually aren't part of the cluster, so they won't show up inside these metrics. Uh, they use Akadot Remote and the Akadot Cluster Client to connect to the pricing node. They form a subscription to a, a distributed pub subtopic, which in turn gets published back out to one of the actors running inside our web node, which in turn gets published over SignalR back to our screens when we connect to it. And it looks like something in that process is broken right now. So let's take a look if we scroll down here to exceptions by type. <clears throat> so we can go ahead and see, I scroll over to the right, I can see an exception count so it looks like we've definitely had some problems writing to MongoDB. Uh, not sure why that is, but we'll go and take a look. And that's coming from the trade processor. So let me go ahead and actually sort these by role real fast. So the trade processor and the pricing engine both had some trouble writing to Mongo here over the past five minutes. This is sort of the window of time we're looking at. So this isn't great. Looks like we had some problems connecting to it. And then it looks like the number of errors has kind of leveled off. So if we took a look through our logs, I'm pretty sure the problem that we had observed here was probably that MongoDB was still initializing inside our Kubernetes environment because it launched at the exact same time as the application did. And Mongo takes a little bit longer to initialize. I'm pretty sure that's the problem. In fact, yeah, we can see these error rates going down. Now, the other error rate we can observe is that our two pricing nodes, both of them, we can see their addresses show up here. Both of them, and by the way, they don't have a role in the cluster because they're not part of it. We can see that both of them threw an actor initialization exception, which means an actor had trouble starting inside of here. So this usually gets thrown as an exception uh, when we go ahead and try to instantiate a new actor. Okay. Well, if I take a look at some of the other services down here, I can see that we've had two different stock publisher actors, probably one for each node. Two were created and two terminated. 
Uh, the other actors that are running on our web nodes here all appear to be alive. The stock event configurator and the cluster client. So this tells me this is the actor that probably failed, our stock publisher actor right here. Now, if I keep scrolling down, I'll go ahead and see some data uh, that has performance for other different types of actors inside our system. For instance, I've got some data for the pricing nodes here. I can see that we're handling about 111 requests per second right now. Um, we don't have any actor crashes of any kind, so that service is probably doing okay. And I can see that over five minutes, we've processed 15,000 match events. Uh, match events are what the pricing nodes use to go ahead and compute pricing updates, so that pretty much figures. And then if I scroll down further here, I can see our trade processors are showing up. And I can see they're doing about 18 requests per second. So they're not quite as busy. Uh, but I can also see they're going and creating and terminating actors a little bit more frequently behind the scenes, including these right aggregators. Uh, this is probably all from when Akadot cluster sharding was getting going. We probably needed this to go ahead and kind of distribute the shards a bit. That's probably what that's all about. And then if I scroll down here, let's see. What type of node is this for? I actually don't know why Grafana created several different copies of these actor metric sections. That appears to be a bug with Grafana itself. Now, I've got enough information I need to debug this, though. I want to go ahead and try to look for our stock publisher actor and see what happened. So the service we're going to go ahead and take a look at in the sample is I want to take a look at Jaeger, our distributed tracing engine, which is connected to Phobos here. So we got metrics. So Phobos is sending metrics that are being gathered by Prometheus, and it's also going to send traces that are going to be indexed and made searchable by Jaeger. So the Jaeger web UI is running on localhost 16686. So let's pull that up. All right, so here we are. We've got the Jaeger UI in front of us. And we can see a number of different services appear on the service tab here. Uh, one of them is the actual Jaeger UI, but the other four are our services that we're interested in. And in particular, the aka.cqrs.pricing.web process is the one that we're looking at here. It's the one where we're not able to actually see any of our stock ticker data show up. So I wanna go ahead and just take a look through all of our traces and see what shows up. So I can see a whole bunch of publish operations here where we're publishing a volume change message and that's all getting delivered to dead letters. And the reason why that is, is it appears to be, well, in this case, uh, that there's a couple of actors on the pricing service that should be receiving it, but aren't. And then that data also makes it over the wire to the aka.cqrs.pricing.web service. And it looks like our stock publisher actor is supposed to receive a copy of this message too, but it's not. So this actor is not, is not alive. That confirms what we saw on our Grafana dashboard earlier. So let's take a look and see if we can figure out what may have happened to that actor. And I see an operation here called aka.actor.crash. Let's go ahead and look at that. And I can see two of these, probably one for each of the two nodes of this type we have deployed. Let's take a look at this operation. Yep, this is our actor. And I can go ahead and see the error data that was captured by Phobos here. I can see a type load exception was thrown uh, when we tried to create the stock publisher actor using dependency injection. So my guess is, uh, based on this error message, that we never registered the stock hub helper to our DI container. And that's why this process can't start. So that's probably all the information I need for now to go ahead and debug this. Let me go ahead and make that code fix real quick and we'll try redeploying everything. All right, so this little line of code is what I needed right here. This registered my little stock hub helper class, which takes a dependency on the SignalR hub context. It kind of helps connect those parts of my service together. So I went ahead and I did that, built a new version of my Docker image and then just deployed everything a couple of seconds ago in my uh, terminal here. So let's go ahead and take a look and see how things are running here. And lo and behold, it looks like the new version of my service is now up and running. I'm receiving the price and volume information that I was trying to get this entire time. So it looks like Phobos was able to help me kind of find and isolate my problem here uh, with just a little bit of help from our uh, tracing system. So that's how you can use Phobos to debug live issues with your applications, including distributed ones like this sample. I hope you found it very helpful and please leave us any questions you might have in the comments. Thank you very much.